perspectives on this. I will bring in a way of Gutari, who is an analyst at uh, Financial Derivatives uh, Company. Okoyemi, uh, good morning to you and thank you for coming through. Good morning. Okay, so with uh, agri uh, prices, agri commodity prices doing well, perhaps we could have some tea, coffee, and pastries, isn't it? Because the prices are sweet as well. Yes, the agri commodities are doing well this week, and the main reason for that is the softened dollar. So um, it's making um, imports less expensive for commodities imported. Okay. Um, now, if you look at this uh, 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 story, I I'm trying to get some of the data that uh, you pushed out in terms of cocoa prices. It's negative for uh, FMCGs in Nigeria. That's a fast-moving consumer good. Sugar, on the other hand, uh, the decline in price is positive, uh, specifically for Nestle, Cadbury, uh, perhaps Coca-Cola, 7-Up, and others in that uh, 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 bracket. Uh, talk to us on this. Well, most of this, um, most of these FMCGs, they use they use these products as part of their inputs for production. So um, for 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 cocoa, prices have increased, and um, since prices have increased, that's it's an increase in cost of production. So that's why I said it's been negative for them. And for sugar, prices have declined, um, which was driven by um, Asian by an increase in supply from Asian economies specifically Brazil, India, and Thailand, which are part of the top five producers in the world. So there has been a decline in prices, and for that reason, that would reduce the cost of production for this firm. Okay, well, well but, but one interesting part of the entire market uh, scenario is that the dollar will not stay weak uh, endlessly. So as soon as the dollar starts recovering, where do you think uh, agri uh, products will go? Well, as soon as the dollar starts strengthening, I guess um, the, the, what would drive a brick price is be dependent on the supply and demand. Um, if prices, if supply remains high, then prices are likely to go down. Or if demand exceeds supply, then prices are going to go up. So it all depends on the supply-demand um, relationship. Uh, in, in terms of uh, what the FMCGs here in Nigeria are demanding, do you have any data as to whether there has been uh, perhaps the, has anything reflected in, in prices on, on, on the shelf, on the marketplace, uh, putting uh, cocoa, sugar, wheat prices together as uh, also weakening dollar? Has this any of this reflected in what the consumers pay? Well, the thing with these firms, for these firms, the effect is likely to be lagged in the coming months, meaning that they wouldn't necessarily feel this impact immediately. So we would have to wait in the coming months to see if they would actually change the prices of their commodities. But so far, so good, there has been no change. Okay, what else is there that you aren't telling us? So there are talks about the season for cocoa uh, production. We're getting to the middle of the year, so eyes on countries like Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, and West Africa, the three major cocoa producers. If you add Cameroon, some form of some sizable size, uh, some sizable uh, portion of cocoa production also from Cameroon. So from these four countries, uh, what does the uh, uh, season in terms of the rains and, and whatever weather condition, what does it tell us about the output for these particular products, cocoa specifically speaking? Um, well, for, for Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, weather conditions so far haven't been so good, which has um, led them to cut, um, to cut their forecast of production. So um, for Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire specifically, I expect that they would reduce their production of cocoa this year. It shouldn't be as high as last year due to dry weather conditions. Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time this morning. Apoyemi uh, Ogunsa, the analyst at uh, Financial Derivatives Company.
Now, the landing cost of premium motor spirit, otherwise known as petrol, was at 119.66 per litre as of Tuesday, up from 75.15 naira on January 23rd. And that increased by 1 naira 7 cover from 118.59 naira per litre on Monday, according to data obtained by the Punch newspapers from the Petroleum Product Pricing Regulatory Agency, known as PPPRA. The daily subsidy on petrol, therefore, rose to an eight-month high of 48 naira 15 per litre on Tuesday, compared to 3 naira 64 on January the 3rd, the agency's pricing template showed. Nigeria, which relies on importation for most of its fuel needs as the country's refineries and in a poor state, has seen a drop in, import in importation of refined petroleum products in recent months, leading to acute scarcity of the products across the country. And a research note released early today by the investment and securities trading firm FBN Capital has stated that data from the Central Bank of Nigeria shows Nigeria's official reserves increased marginally last month to $29.6 billion. The slowdown in imports of petroleum products which would have helped the which would have helped the reserves has been the principal factor for the central bank strategies to contain the depletion of reserves. One of such moves was to invite bids from authorized dealers, mainly commercial banks, for foreign exchange on a near daily basis and then reject the majority of them, sometimes 90% of the total. But the CBN could maintain such strategies for many months, assuming that the oil price does not suffer a sustained fall. But the central bank closed that window in February. That's the Dutch auction system. Also, let's uh, talk to uh, Dola Pony, who is the head of uh, energy research at uh, Ecobank Development Corporation, or EDC, based here in Lagos. He's joining us via telephone. Uh, good morning to you, Dola Pony. We appreciate your time. Good morning, Boston. Good to be on your show. Okay, thank you very much. We are heading to the final hours uh, when the decision will be taken by OPEC. Two critical decisions to be taken to hold output maintain price stability. Where do you think, whichever way this goes, what does it pertain for Nigeria? Okay, um, I think it's increasingly clear now what the decision will be for OPEC. And um, I mean, it's been going by some of the comments that have already been made by various um, parties that are attending the meeting. Um, the general thing is, if it's not broken, don't, don't fix it. And what that means essentially is that OPEC strategy is working. Um, and there's no need to, uh, to change um, output currently. So the likelihood or the likely outcome we're expecting from OPEC is that they will retain output at 30 million barrels per day. I think if we should see any change at all, any at all, it might only even be a, a change to increase output to maybe 30.5 or thereabouts. And that would be really just to accommodate um, some new production um, coming in from Saudi Arabia and possibly Iran as well. Um, but I think another topical discussion that has been at the meeting is in Iran. Um, the next thing in terms of outlook for Nigeria would be, I mean, it remains the same. If OPEC actually maintains output at 30 million barrels per day, you can see that traders are already positioning. Everybody believes that the supply drops will continue, so all prices are already declining as a result, and that could have some impact on Nigeria. Um, uh, yesterday, the... President, the um, Secretary General of uh, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries was quoted as saying, or as telling member states to go look for alternative energy and start getting themselves wind off the crude oil. Do you think this statement is quite significant before the meeting? Why did you think he said that? Yeah, I, I think it actually comes out of the fact that it's incredibly clear that, look, OPEC has to maintain that sideline or that hard, um, hard, push, hard line, if I may say it that way, um, to keep output at 30 million barrels per day and ensure that um, oil prices don't rise too fast and start to encourage uh, more shale production to restart. Because, again, don't forget, a lot of shale oil is profitable at $60 a barrel. So even for now that we've seen prices stay above $60 for quite a while, I think it's running to about three, four weeks now. Um, some of the shale production is starting to resume. And if you're looking at data coming out of the U.S. already, um, last week it was recorded that U.S. recorded production of 9.6 million barrels per day, which is their highest so far this year, meaning that some of the shale oil has started up again. 
So clearly, that, that statement by El Badri came out because it's saying, look, we still need to maintain our hard line on production, if possible, even increase it, just to ensure that we retain our market share. The reason why you guys are in, feeling the impact of this low oil price is because the economies are not well structured or not well diversified enough. So you need to consider other revenue sources or other income sources. So, um, and I think that message is quite um, true for Nigeria. Um, I put together uh, with a shale oil on one hand and, of course, the glut in the market, dollar is weak. Uh, does this mean, put together from an analyst point of view, uh, does this mean that there are trouble days ahead for the world oil market and for oil producing countries? I mean, I'd like to be positive, uh, both in, because um, if, you look at, if you look at the first part of the year, we saw a lot of stock and inventory build up, and we saw a lot of countries trying to quickly stock up because oil prices were significantly lower. But um, some of that activity has stopped. And now countries will no longer, demand will be driven largely by what needs to be refined uh, most of purely. And of course, that also means that we might see some seepage in demand. Uh, we might see demand drop a bit in the third quarter of the year. We might also see um, the weakening we are seeing in the dollar is meant to also help demand, but that hasn't really happened because, again, everybody's pricing in the fact that Iran actually has from crude production that have gone into vessels, into storage, that once they are able to sign the deal, um, some of that crude will come on the market. So there's some worry about that as well. So I think all, the, all those put together with the other factors you've mentioned still show that there might be some dark days ahead. Uh, we might still see some decline in, uh, in, in the oil prices. 